Coming your way next, 10 basic things every driver should be able to do to his or her vehicle make way for another short list. How much do you know about the inner workings of your car or truck? I mean, it's alright if you're not an automotive engineer. Of course, if you are, this video probably isn't for you because here are 10 basic things every motorist should be able to do. Unobstructed visibility is critical to safe driving. Helping ensure your vehicle's windshield is clear of precipitation and road grime is washer fluid. Unfortunately, it couldn't be simpler to keep the reservoir filled with plenty of this refreshing looking but poisonous liquid. Mm -mm. Just pop the hood and look for a cap like this. They're usually blue for easy spotting, then just pop it off and top her up. But fluid is only half the equation. Occasionally, you're going to need a fresh set of windshield wipers, which is of course point number nine on this list. Luckily, it's also an easy task to swap them as they essentially clip into place. To release a blade, there's often a small button that you push. Other times, they slide into a hook on the end of the arm. In either case, the blade shouldn't be overly difficult to swap out, so give it a try next time they're smearing rather than wiping. Hmm, that sounds like a toilet joke. Moving on, another mission-critical vehicle component is engine oil, and it's super easy to check, provided you don't own an electric car since they lack crankcases full of lubricant, or a modern BMW, which of course don't have dipsticks. Keeping an eye on the oil is a snap, just make sure the vehicle's sitting on a relatively level surface, and if you just parked it, wait a few minutes as the oil may not have completely drained back into the pan, which could result in a false reading. With all that out of the way, simply pull the dipstick out, wipe it off with a rag or piece of paper towel, and stick it back into the tube from whence it came. Then pull her out again and read the level. If the oil shows between the low and full marks, you're good to go. Now, this is a case where more is not better. Having an overabundance of oil in an engine can be just as bad as not enough. In fact, it can lead to aeration and many other issues. So basically, keep it between the marks and you should be all set. But if the engine is low on lube, every driver should also be able to top off the crankcase. Just locate the filler cap, which should look something like this, then pour a bit of oil down in there. Make sure it's the correct viscosity. No, 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 not that. Wait a minute or so and check the dipstick again. To avoid overfilling, add small amounts until the correct level is achieved. Car engines typically take between four and five quarts, though this does vary. A Ram 3500 HD truck with the Cummins straight six diesel requires three gallons of dinosaur juice. Just make sure to check the owner's manual for specific details. But taking this a step further, you could also change the oil and filter, which usually isn't that difficult. If you can do this, sir or madam, you have just earned major do-it-yourself bonus points. Next, let's talk about the only part of your vehicle that should ever touch the road. Yes, that would be the tires. Point number six, all motorists should be able to check their tire pressure. Again, this is a very simple task. Just remove the valve stem cap and stick a gauge firmly over the end. Make sure it seats well so no air leaks out around the edges, something that could lead to an inaccurate measurement. Now, unless there are special circumstances, of course, it's best to maintain the factory recommended pressure, which is displayed on a placard, usually near the driver's side door jam. Inflate or deflate as required. And while we're in this area, every driver should be able to change a flat tire, though unfortunately, temporary spares have become less and less common, replaced by space and weight saving emergency inflation kits. Still, the ability to jack a vehicle up, remove an offending flat, and install a spare tire is an important skill to have, especially if you get a flat where cell phone service is not available. And remember, that's lefty Tidy right, righty Lucy. Just strip the threads and back off half a turn. You'll be fine. Also, add major bonus points if you're able to rotate those tires, a process that's a bit more time consuming, though the payoff, of course, is prolonged tire life. If your ride is newer, you'll 
probably also have to reprogram the tire pressure monitoring system so it accurately shows where each tire is located. Now, point number four on this list of things every motorist should be able to do is jumpstart a vehicle that has a dead battery. Of course, this requires a set of cables, a car or truck that's fully charged, and a little bit of know-how. When attempting this, the most important thing is making sure you do not mix up the leads. A positive terminal must connect to a positive terminal, negative to negative. If you switch them around, very bad things will happen. A helpful hint to prevent this is that the color red is associated with positive and black with negative. Also, in modern vehicles, the negative cable doesn't necessarily have to connect directly to the battery as the negative side is grounded to the engine and body structure. So an engine bracket or metal part of the body will work just as well as a terminal. But if you're in doubt, go for the battery. Ah, fresh air is a wonderful thing. It's as necessary to life as it is to your engine. You see, without a free flowing supply of oxygen, internal combustion simply cannot take place. And that's why it's important to keep tabs on your vehicle's air filter. If it's clogged with dirt and debris, it won't flow as much as it should, reducing your engine's output. But the good news is they're usually cheap and relatively easy to replace. Now, this will vary from one vehicle to another, but in many modern cars and trucks, the air filter is found underneath a large rectangular housing with the lid held in place by screws or clips. In either case, just pop it off to gain access to the filter itself. The new element should drop right in, but make sure to orient it in the same way as the old one. The pleats need to face the incoming air to capture as much dirt as possible. Many vehicles are also equipped with cabin air filters and they clean the air before it enters the HVAC system. Depending on make and model, these can be easier or much harder to replace than an engine air filter, but give yourself even more bonus points if you're capable of this maintenance item. Next up, point number two, every driver should be able to inspect their car or truck's serpentine belt. Provided the part in question isn't concealed by layer after layer of plastic shrouds, it should be a snap to give a quick once over. If the belt shows heavy abrasion, cracking across the grooves, lengthwise tearing, or other obvious signs of damage, you'll want to replace it sooner than later. And award yourself some super bonus points if you can tackle this job on your own. In theory, the process is simple, but it often feels like you need two extra sets of hands to get the belt positioned exactly where it needs to be with the tension released. And remember, proper routing is critical for all accessories to function. Finally, every driver out there should be able to give their engine's cooling system a good once over. Critically important, yet often ignored like that exercise equipment you bought around the holidays in 2007, cooling systems have to cope with scorching summer heat and arctic cold. Keep an eye out for swelled, chafed, cracked, or weeping hoses. They are fixing to burst, which will leave you stranded. Also, make sure there's enough coolant in the overflow reservoir. Add more as required. And of course, if it looks like the antifreeze is discolored or rusty, that means the cooling system is long overdue to be flushed out. Something you can do yourself if you fancy earning even more bonus points. And there you have it, 10 simple vehicle maintenance items every driver should be able to tackle. How many of these things can you do and how many bonus points did you earn? Well, write your responses here on the screen and we'll make sure to read every single one of them. Wow. Anyway, thank you for watching this not so short list and as always, make sure to follow the manufacturer's recommended maintenance items for your particular vehicle. Oh, and just a very quick housekeeping note, if you're looking for a dependable vehicle, do not buy any of the 10 highlighted in the last episode of the short list that we published. It's actually all about the 10 least reliable vehicles according to our friends over at Consumer Report. So if you don't want to spend all the rest of your free time in a dealership service department or on the side of the road, steer clear of all those vehicles.